How about I reveal some jaw-dropping airport secrets? Brace yourself. There are airports that have a position of a wildlife administrator. These people can escort a deer off the airfield. They can keep a family of ducks away from the airport's wet pond. They can even shoo away wayward raccoons hiding in terminal buildings. What they can't do is deal with honeybees. In August of 2012, hundreds of thousands of honeybees swarmed the body of a Delta plane heading to New York City. It happened when the crew was preparing to fuel the aircraft and load the baggage. It was time for master beekeeper Stephen Rapaski to come into play. At that time, it was already the fourth swarm the airport had to deal with in the past few months. In May of 2012, more than 15,000 bees covered a light on taxiway C. It caused a serious flight delay. That's when the airport's wildlife administrator started to Google nearby beekeepers. Luckily, he came across Mr. Rapaski, who was later employed as a contractor. If something goes wrong with an airplane's communication system, it's also called radio failure, the airport tower uses a signal lamp to deliver messages to the pilot. With the help of this lamp, pilots figure out when and where they can land. All of them know where they need to look to get light directions from the airport staff and what different colors mean. For example, if a pilot sees a green beam of light, they know they can land. If there are some obstacles on the runway, traffic controllers change the signal to a flashing red light, and the pilot realizes that landing is dangerous. Airport staff might be watching you all the way from the security check to your gate. Some airports have facial recognition scanners that can easily track you. They're equipped with special software that compares passengers' faces with their IDs. You'll find the most comfortable seats next to the airport's shopping area, and that's for a reason. This is the method retailers use to lure you inside. Imagine sitting there, looking at store windows. You're bound to notice something you really, really need. Buying bottled water at the airport can easily make you bankrupt. But there's one thing every traveler should know. There is free water at many airports. Just bring an empty water bottle through the security check and find a water refill station. These places are usually located near restrooms. If you can't find a modern refill station, there must be at least a water fountain. If you're sneaky enough and understand airport logistics, you can be the first to get your checked bag on arrival. All you need to do is check it later than other passengers. Bags that are loaded last are usually the first to appear on the baggage carousel. A celebrity chef restaurant at the airport might not be as good as it would be if you visited the real thing. Not chefs themselves, but special restaurant companies are responsible for airport outlets. One of the reasons is the extremely strict security that surrounds airport deliveries, including food. You may still have a nice meal, but it won't be the same. Airports and airlines don't tell you the correct estimated arrival times. When your pilot announces the total flying time, it often differs from the arrival time you saw when you booked the flight. It's easy to explain. The arrival time includes some wiggle room for potential small delays, taxiing from the runway, and so on. Arriving at the airport two hours before your flight isn't really necessary. Of course, there are super hectic, ginormous transportation hubs where even two hours might not be enough. But in most cases, the airport recommendation is just an ingenious plan to make you spend more money on shopping, eating, and drinking. After you pass the security check and passport control, you have the golden hour ahead. That's 60 minutes during which you're most likely to open your wallet, to buy a coffee and sandwich, get a book to read, or even spend a hefty sum on new perfume. If you have a long layover, but are unwilling to spend it shuffling from one store to another, you probably have a better option. Some airports have places for a quiet retreat. For example, yoga studios, or even gyms with swimming pools. But they're usually hidden away. 
Otherwise, they'd get packed with travelers. Look for such places away from busy terminals, where most passengers won't find them. Usually, only frequent flyers take advantage of these spots. Even if your flight doesn't offer a hot meal or snacks, it might still be cheaper to eat on board than at the airport, especially if you have the airline's credit card. In this case, you can get up to a 25% discount on drinks and food you buy in the air. Cats present one of the biggest airport threats. There are few things the Transportation Security Administration dislikes more than an angry feline. The thing is that a dog probably believes that an agent who's patting it down is just some random human giving it a good cuddle. But try doing it to a cat, and you might not get out of this ordeal with your hand unscratched. And if a cat manages to get loose, oh, then the animal will not only be extremely hard to catch, but it will also cause a serious security breach if it hasn't been checked yet. Anyone who's ever traveled by plane knows about the no liquids rule. But not everybody knows that this rule also applies to peanut butter, toothpaste, creams, lotions and liquid makeup, lava lamps, snow globes, some kinds of medications, deodorant, and even gel shoe inserts. If asked, most people would say that the dirtiest places at the airport are door handles, bathrooms, or floors. But all these people would be totally mistaken, because the biggest number of germs dwell in airport security trays. Just remember those long lines of travelers touching the trays, carrying them, and putting their shoes, carry-on luggage, and all the stuff from their pockets inside. No wonder security bins have been proven to be dirtier than airport toilets. Besides, these trays aren't likely to be disinfected often enough to get rid of the germs regularly. Oh, I see you're flying somewhere. Let me see your ticket. Even without checking the name of the place you're heading for, I can figure out your destination, all thanks to the airport code. This code is three or four letters used to identify a certain airport in documents related to your reservations and tickets. You can also find it on luggage tags, which helps ensure that your suitcase ends up in the right place. Well, in most cases, <laughs> duh. Air traffic control workers also use airport codes for convenience. But brace yourself, it gets more confusing. There are two main types of airport codes. ICAO, which stands for International Civil Aviation Organization, and IATA, International Air Transport Association. IATA codes have three letters in them, but all the possible combinations are limited. That's why we also have ICAO codes. They have four letters. The first stands for the region where an airport is located, the second is for the country, and the other two letters are given in order. But let's speak about the more often used three-letter codes. Why this number? At first, back in the 1930s, pilots used the National Weather Service's two-letter city codes to refer to airports. But soon, the number of airports in the U.S. outgrew the number of such codes. That's why airlines expanded this system by adding the third letter. It was usually X. That's how LA, Los Angeles, turned into LAX. The three-letter system was completed by IATA in the 1960s. But even though there shouldn't be two airports with the same code, some of these codes sound so similar that you can easily mistake one for the other. For example, look at this airport with the code CGP in Bangladesh. And here we have CPG. It's the code of an airport in Argentina. It's dangerously easy to fly to the wrong place. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.